one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Because this is a special event, we would disperse with the remainder of our regular business meeting. Mary Penrose Wayne Chapter is part of the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution with over 180,000 members worldwide. All members of the DAR have proven their lineage to one or more Revolutionary War patriot. Our chapter is, was chartered in 1901 and is named in honor of the wife of General Anthony Wayne. Our motto, God, Home, and Country, expresses the central focus of our organization. The objectives of the National Society in this chapter are to promote historic preservation, education, and patriotism. The Good Citizen Scholarship Award we are presenting today combines two of these very important objectives. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you Eleanor Dole. Eleanor is the chairman of our chapter Good Citizen Award and Scholarship, and she will introduce this year's citizens. Eleanor. The young men and women seated here are among the very best students selected from our area high school seniors. They are our future leaders, the kind of people who consistently and effectively accomplish much for themselves and the community in which they live. They have demonstrated the qualities of good citizenship, dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism. Our good citizens have a meaningful program prepared for you. Each one has prepared a short speech describing a person who has had the most influence on his or her life. Our good citizens will also share with us their future plans after graduations. Students, when you come to the podium, you will first introduce your guests, and guests, would you please rise as your student introduces you. We know that this is a proud parent day and that award ceremonies are cherished because this is the last semester of your child's high school career. When you have finished your remarks, please introduce the student sitting next to you. With that, I'm happy to introduce Isaac Beam from Bishop Dwinger. All righty, so uh, here we go. I'm gonna go off script here for a bit. Um, so I'm going to start with introducing my father, who's right there in the uh, military fatigues. Uh, he works down at the 122nd Fighter Wing. Uh, and there, in the middle, is my mother. Uh, well, now she's not the middle. Uh, she's right there. Uh, and then one next to her, that is my grandmother. Uh, she's my dad's mom. Uh, I call her Grandma Park, so you can just call her Evelyn. Uh, and then on the far right, we have Grandma Lake. She is my mom's mom. Uh, and then, actually, I'm going to go back one more row, or a couple more rows. So, yeah, my two guidance counselors, uh, Mrs. Moylanen and then Miss McGuire. Uh, and then my former English teacher, uh, Mrs. Renshaw. And then going back one more row, you have my, I suppose, surrogate grandparents, uh, Grandma and Grandpa Villa. Uh, I'm a member of the Sons of the American Revolution, and I'll talk about that in a bit. So that's why he's here. Uh, so going on, I'm just going to talk about my interests. Um, so the first thing that I have is uh, genealogy. That's the first point that I thought uh, was really a defining point in my life. Uh, as my family will tell you, I'm constantly going to people's houses uh, and pretty much just calling them up, asking if I can come over and look at pictures. Uh, whether or not they want that, I pretty much force myself upon them. Uh, so that is my favorite thing to do, is just call people up unexpectedly, uh, and maybe one of you will get a call one of these days. Uh, so next... Uh, looking more specifically at genealogy, uh, I am a member of the Sons of the American Revolution. Uh, I think it was last year, yes it was last year, I planned uh, and I worked on this. So Jacob Brumbaugh, he is my patriot ancestor. Uh, he was a farmer in Pennsylvania uh, and he went on to help in the American Revolution by uh, uh, weaving blankets and other necessities for the patriots. He was a pacifist, uh, Mennonite, so considering that he did the best he could uh, in the face of war. Uh, so looking on to my current uh, activities with genealogy, uh, I'm currently working to become a member of the Jamestown Society uh, by proving lines back to the early 1600s. Uh, so that is definitely a task, uh, and it's something that I find uh, invigorating to do. So next, uh, my next interest, I suppose, would be reading. Uh, my favorite book series uh, is that of The Last Lion, which is, it details Winston Churchill's life. Uh, Winston Churchill's always been uh, sort of an ideally figure to me, someone who's 
uh, faced great trouble in their lives, but who has overcome to, uh, to, to rise to the greatest level. So I think that his life reflects a lot of the struggles that we go through. Uh, he faced defeat in Gallipoli and then later went on to triumph over Hitler's army. So uh, just looking at that, uh, Winston Churchill is definitely someone who I look up to. Uh, and through books, I am able to access more of his life. Uh, and then looking further into reading, uh, the James Bond series has always been a favorite of mine. Uh, I just started reading it this year, I suppose, so it hasn't always been, but I've always looked up to James Bond uh, and, and just how he always overcomes the odds, uh, no matter the situation. Uh, so looking at Ian Fleming and his books, uh, it's just the action-packed suspense that you have from the beginning all the way to the end uh, that really just engrosses me. Uh, and I begin, I've begun watching all the movies, too, so I just recently... Uh, finish that task. And then last, I suppose almost paradoxically, uh, I am extremely interested in studying British royal history. Uh, so considering that this is this American revolution we're talking about today, uh, I don't know how appropriate that is, uh, but I've always found it interesting to look at the Queen and all these other British royals and uh, detail how they're all connected to one another, and that's, I suppose it sort of goes along with genealogy. Um, so next, to talk about someone who's influenced me, uh, I suppose my late grandfather, uh, really got me started on my genealogical pursuits. Um, when I was young, like four years old, uh, I suppose he was just handing me pamphlets about genealogy and expecting me to understand what they were uh, meaning. Uh, so being inundated with that, I suppose that that just led me to be who I am today. Uh, and it really positively impacted my life, making me care uh, more than I do about family, or did at least. Uh, so I guess the last thing that I was asked to talk about was my future plans. Um, hopefully, next year, I will get into the College of William & Mary. Uh, if any of you have any connections that you'd like to help me with, uh, feel free to, to chat with me after. Uh, so that's hopefully where I'll end up. Uh, I was deferred by Brown University, so that is another option. Uh, but William & Mary is definitely the historical focus, uh, and that's what I want in a college experience. So next, uh, I suppose we have uh, Peyton Howe over here. He and I were former colleagues uh, at our elementary schools. So here we go, fourth grade right here is coming back. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, if my family would kindly stand up, that'd be great. Yep, there we go. And my guidance counselor, of course. All right, so back there in the middle, we have my parents, Robert and Rebecca Howe. Uh, my aunt on the far left, Aunt Holly, as I like to call her. Uh, that is my father's sister. And then, of course, uh, my grandfather over there, Grandpa Ken, Kenneth Howe, and that is my father's father. And then my guidance counselor, obviously, Mrs. Griffin, and she's helped me a lot over the past two years. Uh, started really recently, but she's been really good to me, so I appreciate that. So to uh, start us off here, uh, my name is Peyton Howe again, and I'm a senior at Bishop Lures High School. And um, I'm involved in many activities at Lures. I'm a member of the Student Council and the Knights for Life. I would have loved to go on the march, but you know I had some commitments today, so I'm glad to be here. And then I also am a student ambassador at Bishop Lures, and then I'm also a leader of our Sodalitas program. And then also, I'm just to know a little bit more about me. I am an uncle of nine very young nieces and nephews, and I enjoy every moment I have with them. And uh, I also love football. And I love it so much, played uh, all through middle school and all through high school. And these past three years, I've been the starting kicker, place kicker and punter at the school. And senior year, I decided to use football as a platform to make it about something that was more than just football. And this all started when Gayla Carr, a representative of Alex's Lemonade Stand, introduced me to Kick It For Cancer at a special teams camp in Chicago, Illinois that I attended. And the, for those of you who don't know what Alex's Lemonade Stand is, it, they raise money for pediatric cancer awareness. And so after hearing a little bit about this program, I went home and researched the Kick It website. And what I found, I found some interesting facts that actually motivated me into what wanted to make me uh, start this program over at Lures. And I found that childhood cancer research is very much underfunded. I found that every year, an estimated 250,000 plus new cases of cancer affect children under the age of 20 worldwide. And I also found that 
two-thirds of childhood cancer patients will have long-lasting chronic conditions from treatment. And after real reading this, I wanted to start this campaign up, but there are also some other reasons. I also felt the need because when I was five years old, my cousin Jordan Allen, he was a sophomore at Bishop Dwanger High School, uh, he died of a heart arrhythmia. Now, he did not die of cancer, but I have seen firsthand what a child's death can do to a family. And if I could prevent that feeling from happening to just one other family, then I know I'd feel a sense of accomplishment, and I'm, I would be happy that I'd be able to make that family not feel that pain. And then, so I went to kickit.org and started my page, web page titled Kick It With Peyton. And what, basically what we did is we accepted donations from anyone who'd like to donate to us. And it was posted all over Facebook and Twitter. Um, my parents did a great job advertising on Facebook because us kids know how much our parents love to use Facebook. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I retweeted it all over Instagram. It eventually spread to the coaches. Uh, it reached the students, and it actually grew a lot bigger than I expected. Uh, after, also, uh, we took, I took a couple of teammates to Lutheran Hospital because this was more of a team effort. This wasn't about me. This was about the team. And we wanted to see firsthand how we would be able to service these families that were in our, just our community. And it helped us to realize how blessed we were. And then by week two, we already surpassed my original estimated goal for the entire season, which was $2,500. And then week four, which was really the milestone in our season, milestone in our season, uh, we had a gold out game. And which, for those of you who may not know, gold is the color for pediatric cancer awareness. And it was great, we had uh, gold, kids wear gold in the student section. Field dads painted the field gold. Uh, we had a 12 year old girl with pediatric cancer, with brain cancer. Uh, we had the cheerleaders sort of adopt her for the night. And she was able to cheer with the cheerleaders and we had a really good time with that. We had kids and families who are currently at Lutheran uh, come out to the game and we had a tailgate for them, tailgate for the entire family. We had families with kids who had pediatric cancer but then currently beat it and I were able to talk to them after the game and they were very thankful for what I was doing. And it was just a really great night and we raised a lot of awareness and raised May donations from both the home and away side. So it was a really bonding moment for both schools. And then by the end of the year, after extending my goal numerous times and exceeding my expectations multiple times, we raised over $8,000 with donations still coming in. And to be honest, it became far more than I ever thought it would be when I initially signed up and it proved to be an immensely humbling and wonderful experience. I thought that I could help by raising some money for kids with cancer by kicking a football, and, which is what I do anyways. And what it became for me was so much more, and I witnessed the power of God to motivate people to do great things by their selfless acts of kindness and community. It made us closer as a team, taught us that there are things far bigger than football, and showed us how blessed we all truly are. And as far as my future is concerned, I would like to study business and history, and I'm stuck between Wabash College in Crawfordsville, Indiana, and Hope College in Holland, Michigan. Thank you for your time, and I would like to introduce Faith Poor from Concordia Lutheran High School. If my guests could please rise that come with me today. Um, with me today, I have both my parents, Dawn and Steve Poor. I have Sergeant First Class Retired Alan Conrad, who's my JROTC instructor at Concordia, Mrs. Elizabeth Hoham, who was my AP English 11 teacher, and Mr. Andy Morris, who was my United States History teacher, as well as Mrs. Ober, who is my guidance counselor. You may have a seat. High school has truly changed me into a different person. I say that with good intentions behind it. I have grown more in the past four years than I would have ever imagined myself. From being a four-year participant in the JROTC program at Concordia to a four-year varsity softball player and everything else in between, I've learned so much through my time in high school. Coming in as a timid little freshman, I wasn't quite sure why I stood, but let's face it, most freshmen never do. One class that stuck out to me the most that year was JROTC. 
This was in part to the class's unique teaching structure, which was a hands-on objective. Sergeant First Class retired Alan Conrad was my teacher that year, and he began his process of dangling a carrot by speaking about the Raider team and the neat event they would be doing in the spring of 2015. It was a ruck march of 13.1 miles in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. This was intimidating for me at first, but I learned many lessons about working hard and learning to ask for help. Sergeant Conrad has always been there to help me through some of the toughest times in school and in life. And I know that he's always open to hear what I have to say and what might be troubling me. He's always had my back. He's always encouraged me to reach for the stars. He also will not lie or hold back the honest truth from me. And that is what has helped me to grow the most. During my junior year of high school, I had the distinct pleasure of having both a Miss Elizabeth Hoham and Mr. Andy Morris as my US history teacher. I found myself asking them questions about the real world. For example, if I ever had any questions about applying to college or applying for a job or even budgeting, I'd go to Mrs. Hoham for that. Not only would she give me phenomenal life advice, but she is one of the most well-grounded Christian women that I have ever met. I find myself nowadays during my lunch talking to her and asking her questions about how God and how maybe I should handle a difficult situation or even what would God do. I will never forget the day she offered to pray with me. She stopped she, what she was doing to do so. What she has done for me and for other students speaks volumes in so many, speaks volumes in so many ways that I cannot even begin to describe. Mr. Morris put history and learning into a different perspective for me. Mr. Morris is always willing to listen to me and talk to me about sports, Jesus, and also give me life advice. He's a teacher that has helped me to look and expand beyond the classroom. He is very knowledgeable in what he teaches and will always have a book recommendation for the subject at hand. As it currently stands right now, I have two options when it comes to furthering my education after high school. My first option is in Northfield, Vermont, at a school called Norwich University. There, I have been admitted into their Bachelor of Arts Criminal Justice program, as well as their Corps of Cadets program which will allow me to graduate as a second lieutenant upon my completion of four years there. My second option is attending Purdue University in West Lafayette. Many generations of my family have graduated from this fine school and I feel that I will always bleed gold and black no matter where I go. Right now, I'm torn of where I should go to school but I know that either of these fine schools will help me to become the best at whatever I choose to pursue. I would like to thank Sergeant Conrad, Mrs. Hoham, and Mr. Morris for being here and supporting me today and every day through this journey in high school. I just cannot put into words what it means to me. Thank you. Up next, we have Helen O'Shaughnessy from Heritage. Hi, like Faith said, I'm Helen and I'm a senior at Heritage. Um, family and Ms. Shevlin, will you please stand up? Today I am accompanied by my father, Steve O'Shaughnessy, my grandparents, Joe and Joanne Miller, and my teacher and mentor, Ms. Shevlin. You can probably sit down now if you feel like it. Um, <laughs> the prompt for this speech asks about my accomplishments. I am proud to say that I am the editor-in-chief of my school's newspaper the vice president of my school's history club, the president and student stage manager of my school's drama club, the manager of three varsity sports. I am currently planning our spring musical, and this year I helped to plan a Veterans Day assembly. Um, I have also got to work for local Fort Wayne institutions like the City of Fort Wayne Parks Department and the Allen County Public Library during my high school career. However, it is because of the people that have made a positive impact on my life that I know that none of these accomplishments make me the person I am. I'll say it again, I am not my accomplishments. I know it sounds radical, especially when you're asked to talk about your accomplishments, but I have a number of people that show how important it is to not recognize your accomplishments, but the good that your accomplishments bring into the world. For example, Ms. Shevlin, who is here today and is going to be so mad that I am talking about here, is one of the most selfless people I have ever met. She has many accomplishments, and without her, our school would not function properly, and she would be hard-pressed to admit that. 
She has always had my back. She is a strong and formidable woman, and I look up to her. Speaking of strong and formidable women, I volunteer at a food pantry just outside of downtown, named, Miss Virgin named for Fort Wayne's Miss Virginia Schwartz. Miss Virginia was known for her work feeding and sheltering those who are less fortunate out of her own home. Last year, a portion of Hannah Street was renamed Miss Virginia Memorial Parkway. I never met Miss Virginia, but her legacy and her virtue of humility made it possible for the Miss Virginia's food pantry to operate. Both of these women have had an overwhelmingly positive impact on my life and have shown me what a real accomplishment looks like. It is well known that pride is an important concept for young people. We cling to it so closely. Our phones, our clothes, our egos, and our accomplishments. When we accomplish something, it is hard for many of us to refrain from shouting it from the rooftops. But what I have learned from those I have mentioned is that a person is not their accomplishments. A person is the good they bring into the world. I know how important this is from the women I mentioned. Um, and I just want to take a moment to also thank J.K. Rowling for writing the Harry Potter books. I put that in my um, senior bio, and I just feel like it's important to recognize her while we're speaking of strong and formidable women. Um, and while we're on the topic, I'd last like to thank my guidance counselor, Ms. Hunter, and all of the teachers at Heritage um, who have also shown me how important it is to be selfless and show humility. Um, next year, I want to major in biomedical engineering and then go to med school to become a family medicine doctor. I am confident that I will carry the lessons I have learned from these powerful, strong women with me for many years to come. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Sydney Adams from Homestead. Hi, so like she said, I'm Sydney Adams, and I'm a senior from Homestead High School. And with me today, I have my guidance counselor from Homestead, Mr. Quigley, and also my mother, Janet Adams. And so um, over the last four years, I've involved myself in several activities at the school. Um, some of them, I'm in student government, key club, and NHS. And even though I've been pretty academically focused throughout high school, I've tried to explore some new experiences as well, and I'm really glad that I have. Uh, I've discovered a deep love for art and writing, and I'm so grateful to the people that have inspired me in that direction. And to my parents, who love me even when I accidentally covered our entire dining room table in paint. Um, and I think that despite all this, the extracurricular activity that's really meant the most to me throughout my high school career is my school's dance marathon um, during my junior year. Um, during that year, my student government advisor announced that we were going to organize a dance marathon for Riley Children's Hospital in the spring. And after I learned that participating in a dance marathon doesn't require any skill in dancing or running, I quickly decided to be involved. And so I ended up being the director of Riley Relations, which meant that I kind of connected our school's fundraiser to the people that we were actually meant to be helping. Um, and so this really gave me the chance to meet a lot of families and meet a lot of people in my community who, without this, I wouldn't have even known were dealing with so many struggles and going to Riley Children's Hospital to help alleviate those. And so my favorite part of junior year was when all of our hard work culminated on March 25th, which was the date of our dance marathon. And on that day, I can remember watching the Riley families open the presents that my committee had chosen for them and then being floored when I learned that we had raised over $34,000 since September of that year, and then dancing beside a little girl as we celebrated the organization that had saved her life. I really would not trade that day for anything. Um, interestingly enough, the friend who's inspired so much of the woman that I want to be someday has a connection to Riley too. Um, not quite a year ago, after enduring months of unexplainable chronic pain, one of my best friends learned that she had rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, since then, it's, it's been a year of hard times, and the influence of a chronic illness has only made that more difficult. But she has transformed every burden that has been 
put on her shoulders into a way to help other people. Every argument she has makes her more tolerant, and every betrayal makes her more forgiving. When she learned that there's only five board-certified pediatric rheumatologists in the state of Indiana, she dedicated herself to becoming the sixth. She has climbed and continues to climb every single obstacle in her way, steadfast in her ideals and loyal to her faith in God. Friends like her remind me that sometimes the most meaningful inspiration doesn't just come from our superiors, sometimes it can come from our peers. I can only pray that all these things I've learned in high school will guide me in college. Next year, I plan to major in psychology in the Wells Scholar Program at Indiana University. And there I hope to learn as much as I can so that someday I'll be able to use that knowledge to help people. Um, thank you so much for listening to me today. And thank you to Mr. Quigley and my mother for accompanying me here. Thank you. And next up, um, Sarah Herzl from Leo High School is going to be discussing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Herzl, and I'm honored to be representing Leo today. Um, my guests are my mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Kent Herzl, my grandma and grandpa, Mr. and Mrs. George Herzl, and my grandma and grandpa, Mr. and Mrs. Mike Barnes. Um, I like to get involved in a lot of activities and organizations at school and at church. Um, I'm a member of the National Honor Society, and I play volleyball on my church's district and regional team. Um, I am actively involved in youth group. I teach Sunday school to the kindergarten class at church, and I'm a part of the youth praise team. Um, I've been working at a preschool, Kitty Prep, for a little over a year now, and I love my job. I love the people I work with and the opportunities I have to interact with the kids. Uh, this year, I have also had the opportunity to do two different internships, one at Cedarville Elementary in a, in a second grade class, and then one at um, Grace Point Church with my youth pastor. Um, I've gotten to know some really inspiring people at church, and one of these people is Lori Shaley. Uh, I first met Lori when I was in preschool, and I've just gotten closer to her since. Lori is a strong, confident woman in Christ, and she encourages me to be the same. She has been my small group leader since fifth grade, and she has had a very positive influence on me. She's not just my small group leader and mentor, she's my friend. From our Wednesday night devotionals to our Saturday morning coffee dates, she's always there to listen. Lori is always available to talk, and she gives me advice in situations when I don't know what to do. She pushes me to be the best person I can be, and I can't imagine my life without her. In addition to the support she has given me, she has also given me a lot of advice about college and the next steps in my life after high school. Um, for my future plans, I plan to study elementary education at Olivet Nazarene University in Bourbonnet, Illinois. And the next person is Chloe Bramer from New Haven. Hello, with me today I have my mom and dad, Kurt and Sherry Bramer, I have my grandma and grandpa, Don and Diane Boatman, and I have my guidance counselor, Mrs. Jana Getford. Um, wow, these are all some very impressive speeches to follow up on, so bear with me here. Um, my interests throughout high school have included volleyball and softball. I've played all four years and I've loved every minute of it. Um, I'm very involved in my youth group at Emanuel Lutheran Church. Um, I have also danced for 15 years. One thing that was dear to my heart this year at New Haven High School was our Champions Together program. Um, we have been working for the past two years to integrate that through our athletic council and our student body. One thing we did last year was have a combined game with the special needs students and the regular students. And it was just amazing to see all their smiles on the court and how they lit up the entire room. This has driven me to work hard to raise money in order to get New Haven to the Champions Together status. I'm involved in Student Government, National Honor Society, Athletic Council, and I'm the Vice President of our senior class. Some people that have had a positive influence in my life would be everyone here today. 
They have taught me to work hard in everything that I do and to be 100% present wherever I go. They have also taught me to keep God at the very forefront of, of my life. I would like to thank my guidance counselor for helping me with my future plans and helping me get into the Kelly School of Business at IU. I'd like to thank my parents and grandparents for encouraging me every step along the way. Um, this year at New Haven, I had the opportunity to intern at the Parkview Corporate Offices. This was a very unique experience as I was the first student to seek out an internship on the corporate side of healthcare. It has definitely helped to solidify my desire to work in the healthcare fields, and I got to connect and network with so many professionals in all different fields. Um, like I said, next year I plan to go to IU in the Kelly School of Business to possibly study finance, operations, and minor in healthcare administration. Next, I would like to introduce Abigail Bullman from Northrop. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Abigail, and I would like my guests to please stand. With me today, I have my parents, Greg and Karen, my grandparents, Nancy and Lowell, my guidance counselor, Mrs. Sandra Gerber, and my history teacher, Mrs. Hirsch, and then my friend, Ben Arusa. At Northrop High School, it's a pretty big school, and there's a lot of different activities that uh, you can get involved in. At Northrop, I have played volleyball all four years, and I was the team captain this year, and I was also um, awarded with the second team all SAC. Um, I'm a tailgate leader, which is like our student section, and I help run the student section, throw in my ideas for different like theme nights or idea or like prizes that we have. And it's very a good educational school, and I have um, been awarded my academic letter also with my academic pins. Outside of Northrop, I have um, thrown like a lot of like different ideas in with my church. I am very active in our youth group and I also have been um, experienced the different missions trips that we've been on. Um, the missions trips that we've went on have been through um, Valley, Alabama, Savannah, Georgia, and also here in Fort Wayne. Um, and it's just really like sad to see the different like people that are struggling, the different like homes that really need to be worked on. We have painted new homes, we have built wheelchair ramps, and we've also re-roofed some homes. And this has definitely been an inspiration to me because not only are we sharing the love of Christ throughout um, the different people that we meet, but we are also helping each other in need. And this has inspired me to become an architect at Ball State University next year. And I'm hoping that with this program, I will get to build uh, more durable homes for people so that they won't have to worry about the different uh, struggles that come, like with storms or whatever. And I just hope that I can help um, make homes more like durable for everybody. Um, thank you very much. And up next, we have Andrea Haynes from Snyder High School. Good afternoon. Um, as mentioned, my name is Adriana Haynes, and I'm a senior at Snyder High School. Today, I have with me my mom, uh, Ms. Brooke Haynes, and a guidance counselor from my school, Ms. Schroyer. Um, I have accomplished more than I ever thought possible in high school because of all of the people that have surrounded me with love and acceptance. Um, I lettered in choir, academics, and color guard. I was um, color guard captain for two years, and um, I'm in my school's top choir. I participated in the Isma State and Sol or Isma Solo and Ensemble Contest. And I've gotten a gold rating all three years. And I had the opportunity to go to state last year, and I also got a gold rating there. And over the summer, I had the 
um, excellent opportunity to participate in Indiana's All-State Jazz Choir. Um, and that was phenomenal. I loved it. Um, at school, I'm also the National Honor Society president and the senior class president. Um, high school has done a tremendous job of developing my interests. Um, I have a strong passion for music and psychology, both of which are classes I'm taking right now um, that have really influenced what I'm going to do um, in my post-secondary education endeavors. Um, I also find great joy in being around children, which has um, pushed me to become a camp counselor at a camp in Walkettville, Indiana, and I work with elementary aged kids for a week. I take care of them and I make sure they have fun and they experience God's love, which has um, greatly in, um, influenced my career path. Um, but one of the things that um, I really found great joy in writing about today for my speech was the person that has influenced us the most. When we were asked to do this, a lot of people came to mind, like my youth group leaders, Dave and Catherine Lawson, or the camp directors at my camp. But the one person that stood out among the crowd was my current choir director, Margaret Buttermore. And unfortunately, she couldn't be here today because she is a teacher and she has to teach. Um, <laughs> She has um, truly changed my life in so many, so many ways. And if I'm completely honest, at first I wasn't sure how well we were going to get along because I didn't have the best behaved freshman choir class, so a lot of time was spent disciplining those who needed it. And I just was very off put by the fact that we never got very much singing done because there were people who weren't really a fan of Miss Buttermore, I suppose. But I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt and I kept doing choir. And that's honestly been one of the greatest choices I've ever made in my life. Miss Buttermore has um, helped me mature and she has instilled a drive for excellency that I never would have had possible without her. Um, she is one of my favorite people and an excellent mentor. And I'm so glad that she's in my life. Um, for my future plans, I plan to go to Taylor University in Upland, Indiana, and I'll be double majoring in bio pre-med and psychology pre-med. Um, and after that, I hope to um, be a psychiatrist or an emergency room physician. I hope to do a lot of missions work when I get older, and I've considered um, volunteering with the Peace Corps. I also would be very interested in volunteering with the Thirst Project, which um, is dedicated to providing water for um, countries that don't have clean water. Um, so once again, it was an honor to be selected to be up here today amongst all of these other amazing people. Um, thank you, and next will be Stacy Tacasco from Wayne. Good afternoon, and my guests here today are my mom and Mr. Nevels, my guidance counselor. I'd also like to thank them for being here. So, I wouldn't be here. Thank you for being here, because without you guys, I, without your help and support, I wouldn't be here. And Mr. Nevels for informing me about the DAR scholarship and my parents specifically for constantly reminding me about the importance in education. A little bit about myself is that I go to Wayne High School, I'm a senior at Wayne High School. I'm the oldest of six in my family. I have many siblings, mostly boys, real energetic, it's a lot of trouble. And like most teenagers, I like spending my time with my friends, chatting and meeting up with them. But when I'm not talking to them and anything, I read, draw, or write. And one of the main things out of those I like most is reading. And that's been a big impact on my life. In first grade, I struggled with reading really bad. 
that I had to be pulled out of class. And the teacher, Ms. Paul, from Abbott Elementary, would pull me out and help me improve on my reading. She made it fun, not something boring that we had to do or anything like that. She'd let us, give us a pick of books. Like, she'd like, hey, pick this book. Pick a book you like from this stack. From then on, I've been drawn to books and real bookworm. <laughs> she was a really kind and soft-spoken teacher, really patient. And because of that, um, in the future, I plan on pursuing my passions, which I mentioned were writing and art, which is why I aim to become a author since I realized that reading was really, really fun and everything, but I also realized that I could also write. I didn't have to be a spectator. I could also be my own director of my own stories, stories that I, stories that other readers would enjoy. Which is why I, I'm glad I met Miss Paul for teaching me to read, because without, I would have not come to this decision without her. And also, I also aim to become a teacher. Her impact on me, she left an impact on me, and which is why I want to help other students in the future, as, just as she helped me. And also, my, um, throughout the years, I've been drawing and everything, and that's why I've um, come to realize that I want to study graphic design. Thank you for listening. And now up is Veronica Hathaway. Hello, everybody. Thank you for waiting. <laughs> It is with great pleasure I introduce to you my mother, Christina Hathaway, and guidance counselor, Mrs. Nunley. My dad is uh, unavoidably detained right now, so a shout out to him too. Both of the people here today have been huge influences in my life, and they have helped shape me into who I am today. I have had so many positive influences in my life, which if you think about it, everyone you meet is an influence. So I am grateful to have so many. Many of my teachers have inspired me to optimize my full potential, whether it's reading, science, history, or math, and not just sub subjects either. They pushed me in National Honor Society and Student Council and to get my service hours in and in my sports, soccer, and softball so that I can be an example and lead like I should. But also, I, am a, I have to be an example at home. After all, I am the fourth of nine children. My biggest influence in my life is my dad. My freshman year of high school, my dad found out he had stage three colon cancer. So during that time, he taught me that no matter what challenge you face, you have to brave it out because everyone has their own individual cross they carry. And mine was being a leader to my younger siblings at home. My future plans include entering the medical field, and because of my numerous sports injuries, I am leaning toward radiology. <laughs> I always ask to look at all the x-rays I got, which is more than I'd like to admit to. 
and I was fascinated by them. I am so thankful and humbled to have been nominated for the scholarship by my teachers, and I appreciate being recognized as a good citizen. The Daughters of the American Revolution Society has a nearly 125 years of service to our great country. What an amazing achievement. There is a quote by Edmund Burke that I see in the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo that I think would apply to this meeting here today. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. If everyone lived their life contributing even a little to his fellow man by being a good citizen, this country and world would be quite a sight. I have grown up seeing others contribute to this community like my sister and my cousins and have seen many fruits come out of service. I will continue to do my part. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Veronica. Please join me in applauding all of these outstanding young men and women good citizens. Now it's time to present the winner of our $500 scholarship. This year's Daughters of the American Revolution Mary Penrose Wayne Chapter Good Citizen Award Scholarship is Sydney Adams. From, from Homestead High School. Thank you. I'd like you to now read your essay, and I do have it. Okay. <laughs> um, so this was the essay that I wrote for this uh, scholarship contest. And um, it was our American heritage and our responsibility for preserving it. Uh, in 1776, Thomas Jefferson declared the independence of the United States of America, and the world listened with halted breath. Our people rose from the blood and grime of war and colonization to begin something anew, something based on the principles of freedom, compromise, and leadership by the people. By 1783, our ideals were protected by a Bill of Rights and a democratic Republican constitution we wrote ourselves. And from then on, began a long, tumultuous journey on which our ultimate and ongoing goal has always been not only to govern ourselves, but to uphold the ideals of freedom in our foreign affairs. Early in America's history, liberty and justice for all was perhaps too idealistic a phrase to be accurate. If it was our goal to be a leader in the Western world's turn towards democracy, we first needed to evaluate whether our freedom held any worth when it was not accessible to everyone. Slavery was not abolished until far into the 19th century, only after civil war threatened to tear the Union in half permanently. People of color and women were not included in the all our pledge references for quite some time. Yet, we are fortunate as Americans to have a constitution that was designed to evolve with our people's wisdom, which is exactly what it did. Moving into the 20th century, the US abandoned isolationism in favor of progressive moral diplomacy. But in spreading the reaches of our nation, we fell into the practices of imperialism that contradicted the liberties we were founded upon. Since then, however, politicians like Jimmy Carter have made efforts to right the wrong of our country's past. Here lies the value of history and of a democratic nation's capacity for evolution. In recent decades, America's commitment to freedom has been severely tested by both our own involvement in foreign conflicts and the recurring threat of extremist terrorism. Sometimes we waver. Sometimes our leadership stumbles. But our relationship with freedom remains, sending a message to democracy's opposition with a ring as clear as the bell that we call liberty. The United States of America is not without its flaws but it is often our mistakes that grant us wisdom. Patriotism is the knowledge that we are blessed to live in a land where trial and error are vehicles on a road to progress and where we are fortunate to be children of the land of the free. We must acknowledge that there are others as deserving as we 
who were not granted the same privilege. And in knowing this, we as Americans have a responsibility to share the lessons history has taught us. The spirit of democracy is not accessible to every people. In spreading freedom, we must take great care to preserve peace and sometimes to exercise restraint. But this does not mean we compromise our commitment to the, gal to the values that we know to be true. We are a nation that is built on civil deliberation, but our liberty is the one thing we will never, ever surrender. So long as we always remain oriented towards the freedom each star and stripe of our flag symbolizes, we are continuing the legacy our nation's founding mothers and fathers began in 1776. It is our honor, it is our privilege, and above all else, it is our responsibility. Thank you. One of our judges was U.S. Representative Jim Banks. His senior advisor, Chris Crabtree, will now speak for just a moment. Notice she said just a moment because I'm like the 15th speaker today. So, <laughs> But uh, it's an honor to be here and I bring you greetings from Congressman Banks who's uh, in Washington. Uh, on congressional duty today, but uh, this is this has been a great experience, and it's been very encouraging. And uh, um, Isaac, you mentioned that uh, your grandfather had started talking to you about your family history when you were very young, and it brought back memories of my grandmother when I was about five years old. She would tell stories about our family history. We, I grew up on our family's revolutionary bounty land grant where our family had been for 200 years and it was at that time I started hearing about the Daughters of the American Revolution what an important organization the DAR is for our country and uh, it's just part of the fabric of our country and days like today prove the importance of the work that this organization does and uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution has been very focused on reminding us of our, our history of service in America and uh, today we were reminded by this group of young people that not only are we focused on the history of service but the future of our country. And uh, after listening to these uh, young folks talk and hearing about their lives and all the good things they're doing and all the, all the support that you guys are giving them makes me believe that America's brightest years are ahead of us. And it's going to be because of folks like this. And I think we ought to give them all another big hand. Thank you. Now I'd like to return the podium to our regent, Barb Harris. I know you're all impressed as I am on the strength of character of all these students possess. And congratulations, Sydney. Thank you. And thank you, Eleanor. She's put a lot of work into this program. Uh, Sydney's uh, packet of information will be sent to the Indiana State DAR for the next level of this competition. Uh, this program is being recorded by Access Fort Wayne. It's a service of the Allen County Public Library and will be rebroadcast re on public access television channel 57 at a later date. I wish to thank jo jo Josette Jordan and the Allen County Public Library and the television for this lovely place that we have this theater here in the, in the library. And I want to thank the judges. We had, uh, it's on the last page of your bulletin. We had the Honorable Fran Gull, Honorable Sue Collins, and U.S. Representative Jim Banks. These judges were chosen by the committee and selected, and they selected our winner. Um, and there's more information about them in your packet. Also, thank you to Phyllis Robb for preparing the program books. And thank you to the past regents of the Mary Penrose Wayne because they have arranged a reception out in the hall uh, to honor these fabulous students, and we hope you can all join us for some refreshments after this meeting. Thank you all for coming out and showing your support for this very accomplished young men and women. Being the high school good citizen is a significant accomplishment for students. Um, 
Once the meeting is adjourned, the educators and parents may wish to take a photo of your student with the uh, committee chair and the regent. And because of this is a significant accomplishment, you may wish to put that in your school yearbook. Um, students, this program is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>